Hello, this is Klaus Jensen presenting a game from round 7 of the Tata Steel Chess Tournament played in Vikansee in the Netherlands and uh, with an average rating of uh, 2740 this is surely one of the events of the year and before the tournament start I was hoping that Aronian could perhaps win a big one here because since I started working on an ebook on the martial attack I've played over many many Aronian games and because uh, he is uh, one of the leading experts uh, on the martial attack and I really like his game although it doesn't attract the same attention as spectacular players like for example uh, Shirov or uh, Topalov and this game is also not spectacular spectacular in the meaning of uh, being tactical it's a nice positional effort with the black pieces against Alexander Grischuk playing the white pieces and the game is as I said from round 7 and the game starts e4, e5, knight f3 and knight c6. Aronian is of course not afraid of a possible relocus which is his favorite opening as black against e4. Bishop b5 and we have the relocus a6, bishop a4 and knight f6, castles and bishop e7 and now we have the closed relocus and if Grischuk had continued with the main line rook e1 Aronian would undoubtedly uh, have tried uh, the martial attack if Grischuk would have allowed it b5, bishop b3, castles c3 and d5 where black sacks a pawn for a long lasting pressure against the white king and this is what Aronian usually plays um, I've played it many many times and he's almost never lost a game uh, with the with the black with the martial attack but instead Grischuk uh, exchanges on c6 he doesn't want to go into a dispute over the marshal so he plays this exchange variation instead and d takes d6 c6 sorry and knight c3 and now it's clear to see the difference between exchanging on c6 immediately and waiting until black has played knight f6 because now the e5 pawn cannot be, be protected uh, with f6 uh, the black knight has to move again but had uh, if we go back here had Grischuk exchanged on uh, on c6 immediately here um, then after d takes and castles then black can play f6 to protect the e5 pawn this way and then he doesn't have to move his uh, knight twice so back to the game taking on c6, knight c3 and now uh, Aronian has to play knight d7 then came d4, e takes, knight takes castles, queen e2 bishop d6, bishop e3 knight f6 and f4 and now Aronian decides he wants to play with the bishop pair against uh, Grishchuk's pair of knights so he plays knight g4 rook a d1 and knight takes e3 queen takes e3 and f6 to prevent the e5 push from from white knight c to e2 queen e7 and king h1 followed here and people often often ask why masters very often make these unprovoked king moves after having castled and in this case the reason is that Grischuk wants to eliminate the danger of having the queen and the king on the c5 g1 diagonal this could be dangerous with a possible bishop c5 from black when there's no longer a knight on d4. Rook e8 putting pressure on e4 and helps control uh, the e5 square. Knight g3 defending the pawn on e4. Queen f7, b3, uh, a2 pawn was hanging. Bishop g4, rook d1, bishop d7. and um, Knight f3, rook a d8. Now we have reached a crucial point in the game. All mill game play at this point has been focused on the e5 square and the possible e5 push from white. And the big question for Grischuk now is whether to play it or not. It looks like the right, right continuation, but one long term problem is that it opens up the position for Aronian's bishops. And another long term problem is that he gets an isolated e pawn but anyways Grischuk decides to go for e5 
and f takes f takes and queen g6 is uh, eyeing the c2 pawn and the bishop cannot be taken because of the pinning of the pawn to the queen um, and now Grishchuk plays the very strange uh, queen a7 it looks pointless to me and uh, Aronian demonstrates very nicely why it's, uh, it's a pointless move much better would have been either c3 or uh, queen c3 to protect the, the pawn on c2 but uh, queen a7 was played and um, then came bishop b4 rook goes to d1 and bishop c8 defending the pawn on uh, b7 and opening up for the rook exchange so the queen a7 move was quite pointless and now in fact uh, Grishchuk is forced to play uh, queen f2 here because had he played c4 for example to remove the the pawn from the attack then after rook takes rook takes and c5 and now the white queen is in big trouble in the corner of the board so he has to play rook, uh, queen f2 rook exchange on d1 and rook f8 pinning the knight to the queen queen e2 re removing uh, the pin and also threatening queen e4 and forcing a queen exchange and um, Aronian wants to trade rooks rather than queens at this point of the game so he removes his bishop to e7 rook f1 h6 knight d4 c5 and now the rook exchange which is um, perfect for Aronian and knight f3 the absence of the rooks on the board gives Aronian's bishop a little more space to work on but still the position is fairly equal bishop e6 knight f1 b5 c4 b takes c and b takes c and both sides are now having lots of weaknesses on the queen side but the difference is that it's much easier for black to exploit the white weaknesses because of the long range powers of the bishops and a more active queen and queen b1 illustrates this uh, about the more active queen pinning the knight and attacking the a2 pawn the pawn is defended by the queen so Grishchuk uh, plans to uh, remove his king uh, to free up the knight again so he plays h3 queen c1 now attacking the weakness on c4 which has to be defended with the knight uh, 3 to d2 forced move and bishop e2 e7 sorry the threat is bishop g5 here king h2 removing the pinning of the knight uh, on d1 bishop g5 and it, it's now very clear that the bishops are superior to the knights in this position g3 uh, Grishchuk is having extreme uh, difficulties finding good moves and queen c2 now attacking uh, uh, the pawn on a2 which has to move and queen f5 and now it's h3 that is attacked poor Grishchuk all his pawns are hanging g4 bishop f4 check king g2 and after a long pressure on all weaknesses in the white position Aronian is finally able to claim a pawn the weak isolated e pawn which was the result of Grishchuk's e5 push earlier in the game so he takes on e5 and Grishchuk can do no better than to exchange queens and hope for an end game miracle but it will soon turn out uh, that this miracle is not to come and the long range power of the bishop really shows here attacking the a3 pawn knight b1 to defend it king f7 queen king f3 king f6 king e4 king g5 knight d5 uh, came here uh, we can have a look at king f3 if uh, Grishchuk had played that then bishop c1 attacking the the defender of the c4 pawn and uh, this would lose the c4 pawn so uh, knight d5 came and now Aronian's light squared bishop retires after a long duty bishop takes d4 5 check c takes d5 king h4 knight d2 and bishop takes a3 and there's no need to play on further 
and therefore Grishu resigns this hopeless endgame. And I hope you enjoyed this very nice positional effort from Aronian, where he displays the powers of the bishops against the knights in an open position with weak pawns on both sides. I hope uh, and Aronian continues his good play and will be a contender for the tournament victory. And I hope to see you on my blog at klausjensen.com. Bye bye for now.